CP. Are you serious? He's gone. Fanny, Fanny, Thomas all the way. Touchdown, Redskins, 64 yards. 26 minutes. <laughs> he's pretty sharp, you know. He'll coach you up on the, the Miami guys and everything else. He's kind of he's kind of fun to be around. Got an opinion too. You know, I've been blessed to uh, had an opportunity to go out and be myself and say the things that I say. And you know, for the outside world, they can deal with it how they deal with it. 26 minutes with Clinton Portis, CP. Teach him something. Welcome to 26 Minutes, episode 37. I'm joined by two of the oldest players on the Skins roster, both of them 37 to 38, Vernon Davis, <laughs> DRC, uh, both blessing the set, man. Appreciate y'all coming on 26 Minutes. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate so it. we're going to get right into it. The Skins uh, get received A-plus reviews for draft class. You know, uh, you coming in, you not being familiar with, with this organization, but coming in, uh, in a quiet free agency, you know, I, I always said you were a great pickup uh, just for leadership purposes and just to have both of you all and me at the same time, I, I really want to start this segment off about where you all are as veterans on this team. Like, how do you all um, lead or when you come into this locker room looking at the leadership issues uh, for quite some time now? But Vernon, since you've been here, you start off. What what do DRC need to bring to the table to help this team with the leadership? I think DRC need to just do everything he's he's been doing since he's been playing this game, and you know we all know about his career and what he's been able to do, uh, his ability to go out there and you know run and and make big plays. So having him, you know, with all that he comes with is is a plus for us because a lot of these young guys can follow him and look at his hard work and enthusiasm and pretty much mimic uh, what he's doing to help contribute to us winning games around here. Yeah, I see Ben in, in locker rooms on teams, uh, winning a, a championship. When you come into this organization and see uh, what's here, how far away are you from saying, you know what, adding this piece of the puzzle, we're close? Yeah, I, I look at the uh, guys that are on the roster, man, and I know they're, we're definitely close. Uh, Especially from on both sides of the ball, you you have you have everything. You, you you draft a young guy, but you still have guys here old enough to teach teach the young guys the things that they need to do immediately to come in and make an impact. But uh, just from my standpoint, man, I believe you know I'm at the career where I just come in, you know, uh, wherever they use me. You know, I don't know where I'm gonna be used, but I do know wherever I'm be used, I'm gonna go 100. percent And uh, that's why I get here early during these times. Let a guy they see guys like us. 12, 14 years in the league, they're like, man, them guys still showing up OTAs, out there running around, running hard, and still doing things. You know, uh, you just grab a young guy and bring him along. For guys mm-hmm. like uh, what you mentioned, that a guy that, that's coming from an organization, or you're coming from being retired, coming into an organization, when you look at a guy like Le'Veon Bell, right, mm-hmm. uh, who's had so much scrutiny, so much conversation surrounding him uh, over the last two years, basically, uh, when you look at him, going to the Jets and then all of a sudden saying, you know what, I'll be in when it's time to play. What do you all make of that? Um, for me, uh, I mean, if you look at the past, a lot of guys who have been veterans, they, they normally, that's that's pretty much their attitude. You know, I'll go in when I get there and, you know, I'll show up. But you just I, got I, paid and you're, you're leaving an organization yeah, yeah, that yeah. probably had a dynasty, yeah. going to an organization that a lot of people feel like reached mm-hmm. on you and then you know was there a conversation prior mm-hmm. to him saying you know what i'm not coming to otas i'm gonna do things like i'm gonna be ready you know or was this blindsided to the jets we don't know that mm-hmm. but just saying that if it was a blind side to the jets how does that look yeah sometimes you have guys who you just you have to understand their personality their character of course a lot of guys in the locker room might look at it and be like hey he, got, he, got, he just got paid a lot of money and it would be great for him to be here to just show, you know, that he, hey, he's a leader. Um, you know, you know the saying, who much is given, much is expected. And that's what we expect out of him. But in his mind, he's like, hey, I'm going to show up when I get there. You know, I'm a big time player, so I can do that, blah, blah, blah. But it, and, but they just have to understand, hey, that's what they're getting. So, I mean, right. if they're cool with it, they sign them and they just have to know that's what he, that's what he's about. Uh, I also think that add pressure on him as a player, you know, uh, with, with all that being said. You know, once you get there, I mean, you got to, you got to show up. 
Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that I think that's putting more on you as a player by not showing up. So with that being in mind, I just I think where, wherever he's at, I know he's probably working in, with that in the mindset that man, I can't mm-hmm. I can't go in there and be a bust now. So mm-hmm. you get you get social media right. You get a lot of guys with social media. You look at Le'Veon Bell and his mm-hmm. rap career. You know, constantly, you know, promoting his rap career, uh, which could be a distraction in some locker rooms. But as mm-hmm. you said, knowing the guy. You have to go out and do you, and right. if he's prepared. You look mm-hmm. at a guy on your team like Geis. You look at Geis, he has a huge personality, uh, a lot of expectations for Geis. Mm-hmm. Uh, having AP, playing with AP last year, uh, you see AP do it a certain way where he comes back from catastrophic injuries <laughs> and still perform at a high level, uh, probably one of the most fit guys on the team along with you. Mm-hmm. Then you look at Geis, you know, a young guy that's, He's enjoying life, you know, mm-hmm. but you get the social media aspect for young kids. That's what I'm, I'm leaning to social media for young kids and their presence on social media uh, compared to the normal of an NFL player before mm-hmm. social media came. Both of you all had that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Definitely. I mean, now nowadays, uh, I mean, it's big. But uh, it could go one of two ways, man. It, it could be helpful and hurtful, you know. Uh, I think you got to be mindful, you know. Uh, you know, most of us, man, we just in the mindset we just living our life, but we not really thinking that what we post or what we do could really have that much effect on somebody when it really does, you know. And I think you got to always keep that in mind because you know I don't have Twitter because you know I'm a guy that I'm gonna go back at you. you know, I don't like nobody talking to me like in that, in that kind of manner. So, so I stay away from it because I know me. I think yeah, you gotta yeah. know yourself. Like Instagram, cool, but that, them Twitter, I ain't, I ain't on all that. I just got one social media. Yeah, um, like you said, it can it can help you and it can hurt you. Um, we you just when it comes to social media, we have to be extremely careful how we put information out yeah. there. You know. There's been many times where we would have a meeting and they, they're showing guys who are doing things the right way, guys who are doing thing, things the wrong way. I mean, I'm not saying don't stop pursuing right. careers outside of football because that's what we're supposed to do, find time to do something constructive with ourselves. Right. But it's also how you how are you trying to portray the message because you have to understand that there's a lot of young people following us, mm-hmm. like young kids. So we want to make sure we're cognizant of that. So when, when, when you look at – um, all of our situations, right? We've all had knucklehead moments in the NFL, all three of us. Mm-hmm. A huge knucklehead moment yeah. that we recovered from. Mm-hmm. And yours, you know, I, w- I was talking to DRC before you walked in mm-hmm. about just explaining that knucklehead moment and probably being at a low point like, you know what, I got to recover mm-hmm. and actually recovering. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, recovering. You're right. I've 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 had, I mean, a, a ton of moments where <laughs> any, I was just, any bigger than can't win with them. Yeah, uh, man, can't single do it. <laughs> <laughs> single, that singletary, <laughs> singletary moment, man. I was acting like, yeah, you know, I wanted. To, I, I looked up to Terrell Owens, man. So I thought I was To, man. I yeah. just. I was being a I you was being silly. I was being a leader just with your shirt off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah in the club, that, that, you know, <laughs> pool parties with my shirt off. But it's all on how a lot of that, you know, you leave in the past and you move forward. And like you said, it's all on how you recover. How how are you going to move when you get thirty and thirty three years old? You know, people expect us to be men. They expect us to not be the same, but grow up. You know, grow up and 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 change. So I mean, it's how how are you going to respond to? It? How are you going to? Going to act later on. It's not about how you start. It's how you finish. So when you look at that moment, right, if you go back to that moment in time, you were having inconsistencies. Mm-hmm. All the talent in the world, but a lot of inconsistency. Mm-hmm. After that moment, I think your ta- like you became consistent mm-hmm. in your performance. What was it that changed the, that led you to that? Like Because as a young kid, all of a sudden, you don't just change. You don't just mm-hmm. all of a sudden, I don't look up to T.O. anymore. Right. I think the experiences that I had from with, with running – into a feud with so Coach Singletary, and then the, the other issues that I had within on the inside, just knowing if I don't get my act right, then I'm not going to be here. And I, my plan was to at least play 10 years, but I knew the only way to get there is I had to straighten up and get my attitude together, or else I was going to be shipped off. DRC, Definitely. your experiences? Yeah. You had them at every, every stop every, you made. Every stop right? I made. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I was coming in uh, just. When you come in the league and you have success early, you don't really have nobody telling you 
you doing it the wrong way. You know, that I think that was my biggest thing that, you know, first year we go to Super Bowl and I'm making all pro Pro Bowl name for myself and around that third year when things kinda of die down, it's like then then the fingers being pointed at you and you know, uh that year when coach brought me up to the office and telling me guys was, you know, really talking behind my back, that mm -hmm. that kinda of, I I took the wrong route. I lashed out on everybody and I mm -hmm. I kinda just left the facility and, and you know, coach came to me a few days and was like, Man, you just can't let something give up, like you just can't give up. You know, at the end we could talk trade this and that, and to be traded and to be on another team when you feel like you gave it your you gave all. it your all. Like I'm the type of guy, man. You can come to me and tell me anything. I'm, I'm like I'm there for you. I was a good. I know I'm a great teammate because I know my heart is pure. But when I felt like at that point, my my going into that first year and feeling, you know, I lost the love for the game. You know, and it, it took me to really hit rock bottom and to really. You know, get around some guys that was uplifting for me to gain that love back and really want to play again. And, you know, from that moment, I ain't looked back since. But to be felt like trading and let go to them by the moment, that ain't like that, that hurt. So for, for me, I had the same situation. You know, like getting traded from Denver when you left it all on the field. Like, it, I could do no wrong in Denver. And I had veteran presence, Shannon Sharp, Rod Smith, Al yeah. Wilson, you know, yeah. Brian Greasy. I had guys, Ian Gold, uh, John Mobley. Like, it was so family-oriented that at the time of my departure, there was no real problem in Denver. Right. It was just a situation where it's some money over here right. and I get to be the face of an organization or I can stay here like and grind my way up coming out of the shadows with all of these guys that just won the Super Bowl. So, for me, coming to this situation – and playing with Coach Gibbs, playing with Coach Gibbs was great, right? Because so I had I, I had over a career great coaches. When playing for Coach Davis, playing for Coach Shanahan, playing for Coach Gibbs, and all of a sudden I get in a situation with a coach who didn't understand me, with a coach who who hadn't been in this position before, and Coach Zorn. So when you say taking the love away from the game, I know what that feel like. Like. To go out and, and I'm running through a brick wall for Coach Gibbs, and I believe even though it hurts to run through this brick wall, I still believe at some point this brick wall will fall. It's going to come down, and I've seen it. I, I see the bricks. I, I can see the fruits of my labor. All of a sudden, you get into a, a, a position with a coach who doesn't understand you, and I let him take my joy. I let him take my passion of football away because I see – Instead of you adjusting or listening to what I'm telling you I'm successful at, you wanted to do this your way. And doing this your way wasn't beneficial for all of us. Right. And it was in the pudding because we were 6-2 and two and didn't make the playoffs. You see what right. I'm saying? But because you thought I was a selfish individual, I think I was up for league MVP at the halfway point. Mm -hmm. I was in MVP conversation right. in 08, right? And then all of a sudden, we don't make the playoffs. And you have a four-week or five-week period where I go from leading the NFL in rushing over the first nine games to four weeks where I probably had a combined 100 yards over four weeks. But I know what's going on behind the scenes, right? right. And you let someone steal your joy. You let someone steal your passion. For you guys, you got another chance, right? right. For me, it was made up in my mind because this is – Year seven, eight in my career, Sean T just uh Sean T just passed, kids are coming. You know what I mean? Like I'm at a point coming off a of concussion, coming off of tearing my groin. I'm over it. Like I don't want to do this, right? So I never get an opportunity to come back and prove, say, you know what, I can play this game or I can I can gain love for this game again. You all got that. Who were the guys that put you in a position to regain or to rebuild your careers? Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I can, you know, I can attest to that. I mean, just my experience leaving San Francisco, you know, I just, I lost my love for the game because it, it was just a moment in my life where everything just wasn't going right. And then I get traded and I go to Denver. And then when I get to Denver, I started off playing. I played well. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting 10 snaps a game trying to figure out what's going on. So after that, I was like, hey, I'm done. I'm about to retire. And then after the season, after we won the Super Bowl, Nobody called me. I mean, nobody. The only team that was interested in me was the Washington Redskins. So I was like, man, do I want to play or should I hang it up? So I was like, you know, I'm going to try one more year. I'm going to go after it. And then got here and then 
you know, I, I just found another level of humility. And I feel like when we go through those moments, we gain another level of that humility. And I just think I'm grateful for that experience because, I mean, like it made me a better man. You know, it made me a better person, better man. But the fortunate thing was I was able to get another shot and prove that I could still play this game. Um, so I would have to say that Scott McClune, the general manager that I had in San Francisco, who was here um, after I left Denver, he brought me in, gave me a shot, you know, convinced the Redskins that I could still play, and there it was. Yeah. Um, I say uh, entry and roll. You know, uh, Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he always, since I came in the league, man, just kept me under his wings. I had to play with him in Arizona, then play with him in New York. But even to this day, man, it, it probably once a week he gonna call me and just check up on me and make sure my head straight because he, he 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 know me. I, I could I can't go off the wire and not then. But like you said, you had a moment, man. And once you hit that third and thirty plus, man, you you got to carry yourself a certain way. So yeah. so mainly, man, I just been really focusing on that, just trying to stay level headed and keeping the right guys around me that's gonna hold me accountable. Well, being held accountable, I got to pay the bills. Yeah. Uh, they can continue to join us in this discussion on 26 Minutes. We'll be back. Segment two. Helping people improve their lives is what should drive business. That's the belief at Coke Industries, which employs more than 65,000 people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs in transportation, medical care, water filtration, household goods, energy efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations firsthand at KOCHindustries.com. The Times and Money family of Scratchers from the Virginia Lottery has $344 million in cash prizes in the entire family. One game that features a top prize of $7 million and the chance to multiply your winnings anywhere from two times to a hundred times. From two times the money and its top prize, 4,000 to 100 times the money and its top prize of 7 million. These games feature multipliers and a chance to win big. If you find a 100 times symbol in 100 times the money, you multiply your prize by 100. Think about money multiplied. That's what the times the money family means. Visit your lottery. Welcome back to episode 37, DRC, Vernon Davis, blessing the set of 26 minutes. Uh, we've had a great discussion of you. You've been following along. Uh, now let's get into the topic of, we just spoke of our careers and experiences in the NFL and to have longevity, have over three years in the NFL is a blessing. You get a lot of kids that are getting bad advice now. And, and we've been talking a lot about this topic um, lately, you get a lot of kids that's getting bad advice and they're coming out early. They're leaving school. They really haven't put up numbers in college, but it's like, well, I'm going to the NFL because so-and-so said I got a chance and so-and-so disappear once you don't get drafted or you go in the fifth round and realize this $120,000 signing bonus uh, doesn't buy much. And, and you probably prefer to continue to get that meal plan mm -hmm. at the college you were at. So kids getting bad advice. When you look at kids, right, and you compare the NFL and the opportunity in the NFL to make it and sustain, to make an NFL roster, right, is it's tough. You know, you, you look at having seven picks and then your free agency guys that you bring in. All these picks don't make it. Maybe if you're a first or second round pick, a third rounder, they're going to give you two years, right? You're, you're going to at least get two years. But when it comes to four, fifth, six, seven rounder, you see fourth round guys getting cut ASAP, fifth round guys getting cut. And these kids never get another opportunity because you don't have a phone league. You don't have somewhere to go off. You know, if the XFL succeed, then – here, here's a forum system. But right now, you don't have a forum system. Mm -hmm. These kids are getting bad advice. You see uh, Holyfield leave UGA early after after all these running backs come out of UGA, Todd Gurley, Sonny Michelle. Uh, these kids come into the NFL and have a lot of success. You look at a guy like Holyfield, and you say, why would he leave? He, he declared instantly, like the first player to declare for the NFL draft. And I just – I'm huge on college football, so I follow this stuff. He was one of the first people to declare. And then you go undrafted, right? You don't show up in your times when it comes to running, which both of you guys, all, all three of us could do. You're running 4-7, four, 4-8. Four, 
first off, you should never leave school. <laughs> you should be looking for an extra year to play yeah. when you're running four seven four eight. Mm -hmm. But the off season training, the just everything, the mindset to get to the NFL. When you look at kids and, and you you still have an involvement at your school, what do you tell these guys? Um, first of all, you want to make sure you dot your eyes and cross your T's. We all know that 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 saying. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that you're. I mean, everything's solid. You, you want. You want to know what your grade, what they graded you at before you come out. You want to know, make sure that you believe enough in yourself that when you go out there, you go to this combine or whether you have pro day, you want to know that you're going to go in there and, and dominate. Your, your 40 time is going to be good. Your, your bench press is going to be right. And if not, then you're just hurting yourself. You're just setting yourself up for failure. Well, a lot of kids don't carry pride anymore. You know, you, you think of uh, – Probably our our time and in coming into the mm -hmm. league, I would say up, you know where where pride was a major factor. You right. wanted to prove mm -hmm. your worth, right? For me, I got a second round grade, and uh, I called Edge, and Edge said, you know, it's really the last four or five games that they mm -hmm. judge you off of, mm -hmm. and your team success. My last five college games were phenomenal. And then we won a national championship. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, you gave me a second round grade before you seen this. Right. Now I'm going to shoot up your charts because the, the knock was questionable speed, questionable hands, mm -hmm. not, not <clears throat> being an every down back and undersized. So that was the knock. You're telling me, I know I'm going to run fast. So I ran a 427 to prove you wrong. Uh, I know I can catch. A, I catch different from everyone, but uh, that ball not touching the ground. So in my passing drills, I went 50 for 50, right? So when they asked me where should I get drafted, I should be the third pick in the draft. Right. Although you told me I was a second rounder, I think I'm, I'm the third pick of the draft amongst everybody. Then I guarantee you and I tell you I'm going to win rookie of the year, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to be one of the best players to come out of this draft class. If you were to redo – 2002 draft class, Julius Peppers, Ed Reed, first round, first ballot Hall of Famers, both defensive guys. Mm -hmm. Offensive guy, I got to be first. I got to be that third pick that I told you I was to the Detroit Lions or you trade up. Mm -hmm. Guys don't have that pride anymore to prove someone wrong, to prove their worth. Every now and then you get a, 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 a Antonio Brown, you get – guys that elevate you know you get a Le'Veon Bell you get you get a Odell Beckham you get guys that but you don't have a consistent class of people mm -hmm. that stand out to prove you know what you you were wrong about me mm -hmm. yeah that, I think that, that's that's why I am that's where I was you know when I when I was coming out coming from a black college you know a small school that's why I tell them guys I, I see it at, at my college all the time man guys try to come out early I'm like Y'all, y'all tripping because <laughs> we're a smaller school. You know, you know how hard that hurt is to jump just by staying all four years and you coming out early. So that was my thing was, you know, I had pride because when I was coming out, I ain't even had no round. They thought I was going in. I was running like the number sixty or something corner. But um, <clears throat> like you said, them last few games I balled. I had a chance to go to the Senior Bowl and the Combine, man. And, and my mindset was, I'm gonna be so good they remember me. You know, uh, when it got defensive MVP of the senior bowl, I led and everything got to come by and accept bench. And I still gave you like 17 on the t on the test. So it's it's all about your mindset, mm -hmm. you know, and all. But I would say stay in all four years, man, because one thing about this league, it ain't going nowhere. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you got one shot. This ain't you ain't got no development league. You, mm -hmm. you shoot the shot and you better make sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. I just – I knew I knew that I had two things and I knew what the – what the combine and pro day was all about. I knew it was about speed and I knew it was about, mm -hmm. about, about the bench press. And I had that. I, I had faith and I believed in myself that I was going to go there and dominate all of those categories. And I also believed that I was the best tight end coming out that year. Um, but a lot of people didn't. So I just wanted to prove them wrong. I had a chip on my shoulder. And then we have, you have to think about everything that you went, you, you went through as a kid growing up. All of that mm -hmm. pain, all of that, that, that anger that you that, that was fueling you to be the best that you could possibly be while playing in high school and playing in college, I mean, you used that, and I used that to my advantage. I knew that I was going to make it no matter what anyone said about me because of how much 
I was holding inside of me and right. I was using that to allow me to be successful. And I just, I proved it at the combine. I walked there. I remember seeing North Turner and I walked into his room at the combine. I was like, hey, he was like, what, what, what you going to do out there? I was like, I'll run a 4-3. Maybe a 4-4, but I, I strongly believe that I'm going to run a 4-3. They started laughing. They, was, they didn't believe in me, but I knew what I was going to do because I was just, I was focused, man. And I feel like everyone should have that. So when you, when, when you guys look back, to stack up against your class, like who would be the next the next guy or the guy that was touted to be the best? Mm -hmm. Because I think both of all three of us have proven mm -hmm. to outplay, you know, our mm -hmm. rankings. So who who was that push in your class or who was that favorite or who was the other guys they were hyping up? Uh they was hyping up in my class it was Mercedes Lewis. They had him going he won the Mackey Award, so they had him going. You see the one pick, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I was, you know, I wasn't worried about that because I knew from watching him on film. I actually studied that guy, and I knew that pound for pound, I was better than him. So I had to go out there and prove him wrong. I said, I'll get my shot. So and there it was. Uh, Leotis McKelvin was the first corner towards him in my draft. Buffalo, yeah, Troy State. Buffalo, cause he, yep, Troy State. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he can return real well. So, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, they don't, they don't even know me yet. You know, <laughs> I'm just. I'm not televised. You don't see my games. You just all I was waiting on was waiting on the opportunity, and I had that at the combine and senior bowl. So a lot of a lot of guys, right, um, come out, especially in Florida. You come out as an athlete. Like yeah. most guys at the skill position was an athlete. I think yeah. about Anquan Bolden. A lot of guys that came out of the state of, uh, of Florida. Anquan played quarterback in safety, mm -hmm. but went to the NFL and was a perennial All Pro. At wide receiver, which he hadn't played until he hit the college level. A lot of these kids come out now, and it's just one way. It's This is the only thing they could do. They can't, you know, it's either running back or nothing. You know, even kids are brought up with this mindset now. When you look at Pop Warner, you look at the youth systems, it's I play quarterback, I play wide receiver, I play tight end. Whereas for us, you had to play everything just to get on the field. You might have to fill in that linebacker. You were undersized, you were small, but you that developed heart, you, right? Uh, playing cornerback or, or safety just to bat a ball down, whatever it was for whatever reason, kids aren't that athletic anymore. Uh, the mindset of, of youth football programs, uh, I'm not sure if you all have, have kids at that age or that level yet, but the mindset of youth football, when you look at youth football and you see guys that come in now and how hard it is for them to adjust to being out of position, right? If they're not doing what they're comfortable with doing, it's like they're not trying to learn it. They're not trying to change it. This is just what I can do, and I'm cool with that. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you should. Yeah, it's not good to limit yourself. Like I tell everyone, like, a lot of high school kids, I tell them, do everything, man. Play basketball, play baseball, run track, try swimming, do it all. You don't want to limit yourself because what that will allow you to do later on is is use, say, your position, like you just said, say they your position is not working, then you have to play something else. But if you have that background when it right. comes to your athleticism, then you can do anything, man. You can do anything. What other position did you play? Um, in college, I played free safety. I played a little corner. Man, you don't like receiver. no contact, <laughs> man. <laughs> man. Hey, man, in high school, man, I was playing that wood, man. <laughs> you? <laughs> I was quarterback, but growing up in Pop Warner, man, I was always undersized, um, but I was always the quickest off that ball, so I, I played nose mm -hmm. guard. And they had me at nose guard. That's crazy. <laughs> I was nose guard. All I did was shoot the gaps. That's it. Yeah. That ball come, I right, go. Have you heard about Creighton Farms, the private club community that's home to the Redskins? Creighton Farms is just 20 minutes from Dulles, but a world away. On top of its award-winning Jack Nicholas signature golf course, pools, tennis courts, and other resort-style amenities, you'll find custom homes and villas that are simply extraordinary, starting at $1.5 million. For property and legal information, visit CreightonFarms.com or, better yet, visit Creighton Farms. Are uninvited pests ruining your plans? Let PMSI, the pest control partner of the Washington Redskins, handle it for you. Call today for your free inspection and they'll work around your schedule to provide you the best solution possible to defend your home territory against pests of all kinds, including mold. Visit MyPMSI.com for the game plan to control the pests on your home turf. That's MyPMSI.com. 
This is Rick Goslin with the Talk of Fame Network. This NFL season, FanDuel has more ways to win than ever before. New Beat the Score contests pay out everyone who hits a certain score. Now it's easy to find your friends and challenge them to play head-to-head fantasy contests for cash or bragging rights. New players, try FanDuel today and get a $20 bonus when you make your first deposit. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Rick. New users only. Bonus not available for withdrawal. State and age restrictions apply. For eligibility rules, terms, and conditions, go to FanDuel.com. If you have atrial fibrillation, you know it can be difficult to treat successfully. And Nova Heart and Vascular Institute in Fairfax is a leader in AFib treatment using specialized technology and expertise. This helps to more precisely target and treat rhythm irregularities that others could miss, helping to restore your heartbeat to normal. Give your heart the benefit of care. Visit anovaheart.org slash AFib to learn more and to find an Anova physician. Innova, join the future of health. I'm trying to meet that boy Clint Porter's though. They say that boy that they say he smooth on his feet. I'm trying to teach him something. Teach him something. Teach him something. That's so great. so uh just to give a moment to just enjoy. Uh I know everybody likes sports in this room. NBA playoffs. These turning out to be some of the better games. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you've seen in quite some time. Everybody always talk about viewership, but you go round one when you got Russ and Dane back and forth. All of a sudden, you get into Houston and Golden State. Houston acts for Golden State, been wanting this problem. All of a sudden, it's 2-2 in this series. Hmm. What series excites you uh, right now? You know, the Bucks. I thought the Celtics were going to demolish them after game one. All of a sudden, they're up 3-1. When you look at, at basketball, when you look at the NBA, and, and how the NBA is ran, the developmental leagues, the opportunity they give their former players, putting them in position. You look at guys like James Jones mm-hmm. uh, that, that become the president of the Phoenix Suns, mm-hmm. and you look around the league, the coaches are former players. You know, you look at uh, Ty Lue and, and Jason Kidd and all of these guys. Mm-hmm. When you look at that, is it exciting, or do you have the hope that the NFL adapts, and do you think the NFL will adapt to that, I mean, mm-hmm. you, I, I, I would hope they would. Uh, as far as like the uh, new football league they had this year, man. I mean, I was into them games. You know, I had a lot of guys that that played in the NFL that went there and got their second chance and then got back picked up. So I, I thought I thought it was a plus. I mean, I, I hate to see it fold. So I, I was definitely looking forward to it being something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same same with he said. I, you know. Um, I agree. I just think it's um, – I don't know. I think we should always, when it comes to to sports in general, there should, we should always evolve. Mm-hmm. So uh, I kind of got to go with what he said. Um, yeah, pretty much. So the hype about NBA, who's your team and who are you excited about? Um, I've always been a Golden State fan, man. I was. Man, you ain't always look, been man. a Golden State. Look, man, man here like, you go. Look, look, so like Tim always, Hardaway, but, Latrell, Spreewell, Chris with, Mullins. Golden State. But I was State. going for Golden State even when when BD was there. Baron Davis. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's Steven when I, Jackson, I was still, Baron Davis. Yeah, there. I was I was Golden State, and then what happened is that they started bringing guys like Steph Curry and Draymond Green, and they just started started winning, man. And you know, so I'm gonna have to go for my guys, man. So Golden State. Bay Area. I've mean, always been a Utah fan. My favorite player was Carl Malone when I was growing up. But uh right now I'm going for the I'm going for the Rockets. I, <laughs> I just like James Harden. He just yeah, he cold. He cold. I like, just he like, cold. I just James like, Harden has James changed Harden the cold. game of basketball. Like he is gonna get either he's taking the shot or he's getting to the free throw line right, every he time cold, he touches the ball. Right. Yeah. I cold. like him. I like him. He cold, bro. I like so you think James Harden the coldest coldest player in the league? Man, no, that drop no, step no. he got that that step. I mean, it's 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 he crazy, man. He top five. But Who would be? No, you give me your top five. So my top five, I'm gonna have to say number one, LeBron, Steph Curry, number two. I'm gonna have to go with uh. You this oh, your top yeah. five, man. You <laughs> name to go with number three. I'm gonna have to say James Harden. Number four, Kevin Durant, and five. Shoot, man, I'm gonna have to give it to uh, my boy, the Greek Freak. So you don't have a center in your top the five. Greek, you know the Greek freak. Yeah, yeah, he's nice. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I'm like, oh, you, you gotta, you gotta go with LeBron. Then I go, then I go, Jan, I go, K, I go, KD. KD, yeah, KD. Then I go, Jane Harden, but then I'm going Westbrook. Ooh, I'm a, that's a good one. That's I, just, good. I like his attitude. Okay. I like that's his good. attitude, but that that dude, I just started 
watching number 34 for the Bucks. Yeah. I'm Giannis. sorry, man. That man can go. I'm sorry, he can go. So can go. I'm I'm gonna go. That's I'm a great freak, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not he's sure not you all know, but it was a setup because I'm OKC fan, so yeah. Instantly, I'm taking Russell Westbrook, oh, okay. right? That's <laughs> okay. that's an instant <laughs> triple double. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, taking, yeah, I'm yeah, taking yeah, yeah, Russell yeah. Westbrook, right? After watching Dame's competition hey, level, he not, he nice though. Dame a bad man, right? He Damian is. Lillard, yes. And I've been a fan of Damian Lillard for for quite some time, even going back to college. But Damian Lillard has shown me something, right? I'm not going to put him on my team because I'm going to go Clay Thompson at <laughs> yeah, shooting yeah, guard, yeah, right? I'm going to go Clay Thompson at that. shooting guard. Come so I got on, Russ man. at point, Clay at shooting guard. I got to go KD, yeah, right? Yeah, I was yeah. crushed when KD left. I talked to KD in Mr. Snyder's suite about this move. All right, KD, you cannot leave OKC. I was in OKC. I talked to him on the court, the kids, right. everybody taking pictures <laughs> in front of Russ, in front of Steven Adams. Man, what you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? He he laugh it off, right? So I gotta put KD at, at small forward. For my power forward, I gotta go with Anthony Davis. Ooh. I gotta go yeah, with Anthony yeah. Davis. Yeah, he's cold. He's cold. So I'm gonna go with Anthony Davis. Cause I'm leaving I'm leaving matter of fact. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Anthony Davis. Uh-huh. And then I have to go with Joel Embiid. Because y'all don't have any height. So I just designed my team nah, to just, beat y'all. Joel Embiid, who gonna rebound? Giannis <laughs> can't guard him. He, he can't guard him. We can we, we box him one. We can help out. He can't guard I, him on the other end either. I like I, I like my chin. That bucket. Man, yeah, he get to the bucket, but that's all he can yeah, do. That's, like that's I think true. I think in due time, in in about two or three years, because you've seen it with LeBron. LeBron didn't have a jump shot mm-hmm. early in his NBA career. Then he began to develop a consistent. Now he pull up across half court and he let it go. Not on the same consistency as as Dame or Steph or James, but mm-hmm. he can. So when Giannis develop a, a jump shot, a consistent jump shot, I think he's going to be the best player in the NBA. But right now is Russell Westbrook, <laughs> and that's our yeah, time yeah. for uh, episode thirty-seven. Thanks for joining Twenty Six Minutes. Vernon Davis, DRC, bless the set. Join us next week.